Hey guys, Kev here, and I have an unboxing to do for you. So, let me move this light, sorry. <sighs> All right, I think we got a little more light. Um, I got a few things here. I don't know what some of them are, so <laughs> let's find out. Uh, unboxing knife. Do -do -do -do. I have the Jackal Knives Lanny's Clip in the, I believe, Toxic Green Camo Carbon. Pretty cool. It's a bit much for me on the green. Um, there's also a Arctic Fat Carbon in the blue. Um, I'm contemplating picking one of those up when they drop. Um, but it is really cool. And you got the Lanny's Clip pattern, which is dope. Uh, definitely a fantastic knife. Jack Wolf always killing it. Beautiful hollow grind. We'll see how she slices. Now, we all know this isn't my type of blade shape. It's got a really good up sweep uh, belly up to the tip. That's not really my style because of the clip point, but I'm going to use the back end to get in there. That didn't work. And it, there, look, that worked for sure. Um, this might be a knife. It could be something I ordered. I have no idea. It's a knife. Kexmo Pocket Knife Tactical Knives for Men. <laughs> 3.62 D2 Folding Knife with Clip. Oh, it has a clip. Just so you can see here, it has a clip. G10 Handle Liner Lock EDC Folding Black. Uh, I don't know where this came from. I think maybe they hit me up on, um, maybe they hit me up on Instagram. And we got the same box I think you get from, like, Stativian and everybody. Um, similar box, anyway. They just put their logo there and then put a cardboard box around it. Nice. So this is probably made in the same place as all those knives, which means it's probably half decent. You get a, uh, bag. You get a recyclable micro pack, micro pack, enhanced PE sheets. I don't know why that's in here. Why is that at the bottom of the knife box? I don't know. So yeah, I do recall now. I think they hit me up on Instagram. And they were like, "Hey, you want to check this out?" And again, you guys always tell me I'm reviewing too many expensive knives. So I was like, "Sure, I'll check it out." Um, it's not my style, that's for sure. Uh, D2 and G10, but you know what? It actually is an interesting knife. Now, we're going to find out right away if they did a good job with the D10, and they didn't. I expected that one. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Look at this. It's very smooth, but there's just no D10 on it, which is so sad. So sad. And you can flick it, so, you know, for some of you, you'd probably be happy with it. Uh, it flicks actually pretty good. I mean, I'm sure I can, yeah. But if you get... Just flick it. Mm. Okay. You have this sort of coffin-looking handle. I don't know. Bone-looking handle? What would you call that? Uh, 3.62 on the blade. Uh, it is a flat grind. Ergos are... Yeah, they're ergos. <laughs> they're not great because this is really stabbing me. You got this ginormous lanyard hole. Um, for the seven people in the world that want it, it takes priority, of course. Um, action is really good. Part of that is not having a detent. It just kind of, you know, drops shut. Um, I mean, but it works. You know what I mean? If you flick it, it flips. So, really good closing action. You have a clip. It's not reversible. It is deep carry. The clip is seated, but the uh, screws are not. Um, I'll link this down below if anybody's interested. I don't know what the price is. Did that sheet say what the price was? Um, I don't think it did, did it? Sorry. Mm, no. My guess is uh, it's in the $20 range. Hopefully. Hopefully it's no more than $20 five thirty dollars you know um yeah you got a lock you got a liner lock with some jimping on it there's no cutout or anything but it sticks out enough you can get you know you can get a hold of it 
You can reverse flick it. You can slow roll it. So, I mean, it does all the things. It's got a little pop of red color. Let's see if it cuts. It's in D2. So, whatever tool steel they had laying around that week is what we're working with here. No choil. So, you know, you can kind of choke on the flipper tab if you want. I mean, not the worst edge, but not the best. But it's definitely serviceable, that's for sure. Um, and you got a tip. So there it is. That's the Kexmo. The Kexmo folding EDC knife for men. Women are not allowed to own this knife, apparently. Just saying. Just saying. Um, yeah, I think it's on Teflon. Washer, uh, plastic washers, I think. Probably Teflon, nylon cage, and then ceramic bearings, maybe. Um, yeah, I got to say, it's not horrible. It is not horrible. Uh, the centering is off. Okay, okay. Centering's off. There is no play. And, uh, yeah, this will most likely become a giveaway knife. Is there any detent lash? No detent lash on a $20 knife. Interesting. Um, it seems that, you know, expensive knives struggle with detent lash for some reason. Um, yeah. Anyway, there it is. So, moving on to the next one. I have a package from Max Gondek. So, this is the Gondek EDC Ranger wallet. I got another one of these. I had it custom made. A little card. Enjoy the wallet. Max, you guys can check out Gondek EDC right here. GondekEDC.com. Info at GondekEDC.com. It's at Gondek EDC on Instagram. So what I asked for is to make it about a half inch wider so that I could get bigger pockets because... Get this out of my pocket carrying it right now so just give me a second damn it i forgot to get rid of the pen loop damn it i knew it I did not want the pen loop can i cut that off just think it's gonna get in the in the way when i try to put it in my pocket damn it uh so i asked for it to be about half an inch wider and that seems about right and just so i can more easily slide things in yeah see they fit a little bit more uh, easily in there so you just slide it in like so and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for the Gondak wallet can I see if I can cut that off because I really don't want it it's gonna look like shit isn't it it's just sewn in there I just don't want to carry a pen in it uh, so I'll have to see all right Next, I have some bearings from my buddy Preston. Right here. So, check out Preston Big Mitts and Fidgets on Instagram. He's also on Facebook, uh, Preston Jenkins. He is uh, selling bearings for spinners, which is awesome. Uh, they're really hard to get in the States. Uh, usually you have to order them from CAP, um, Kinetic Asia Pacific, uh, in order to get them here in the U.S. And, you know, they're pricey. I mean, even his are pricey. I think they're about 15 bucks a pop, but you don't pay $20 for shipping. So... Currently, the places to get these bearings uh, or good ceramic bearings are uh, Cap and um, Unquiet Hands, but they never have these in stock. These are the good ones. The ones that have the black balls and then a uh, sort of black ceramic cage. They just seem to be the best. They seem identical to the Cap C's, which is great. So... I will be putting these into spinners, which is awesome. Put these in here. Uh, 
I like this little case he gave me with it. It's awesome. Real easy to ship in there. Oh yeah, that, that's a really nice case, Preston. So go hit him up if you want some uh, bearings. And then this one also is because uh, of Preston. He told me about where you can get these um, shims. So these are shims to put in with your, um, when you're putting on buttons on your spinner, depending on the spinner you have, you may need these so that the buttons fit. Um, so that's kind of the deal here. I got some of the micro access spinners um, from, who is it from? Um focus works i believe and um you need these shims to make them fit so i got these shout out to preston for that then i have this i don't know what this is this is from phoenix oh did i did i move something oh. oops see i cut through something Oh, sorry. Oh, my Lord. Holy cow. This <laughs> is the mag blade. This is the mag blade. Mag blade, magnetic titanium, quantity one. And I believe this was sent to me by uh, Daily Carry Co. They reached out to me a while ago and asked if I wanted to check one out. And I said, yeah. Um, but then I hadn't heard anything. They never sent it. I kept following up because I'm like, you offered to send the knife for review. And then at one point last week, I was just like, eh, I'll just forget about it. And I guess uh, that struck a chord. I don't know. So here it is. Um, this is the Mag Blade. So basically, I believe this is uh, M390, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then you have a magnetic opening and closure, basically. So it's not like a ballast. I mean, it kind of is, I guess. Um, the magnets are really strong. I like that. There's a little bit of up and down flex. Um, you can feel kind of right here. And when you grip it. It's still there, but I mean, it's not going to close because it can't, right? I assume it can't close until you unhinge that, right? Yeah, see, it can't get past. It cannot go past this straight position of this handle right here. See that? It's hitting some kind of stop. Uh, this would be interesting to take apart, I think. There's a lot of pins in there. Um, so then when it clicks into place... Again, the blade cannot go past this point this way, so it's locked in. And then when you undo it, again, can't go past there, so you have to get the blade to here, and then it can go around and click in. I think that's cool. Um, it is most, it's not centered, it's a little bit off. Let me see if actually I can tighten that down. Is it a T8? Let's see. That might have been a little bit loose. Did that fix the centering? No. Let's see. That one was loose. That didn't fix it either. Um, let's see if it did anything. Because there's no action, right? So it's not really going to... So I think I'm just spinning... I think I'm just spinning the whole thing around. Well, now it's tighter. So let's see. Whoa, just drops. Nah, see, it's still off center there. I mean, it's not much, but it's almost rubbing on this side right here. It should be more centered. But I don't know if the magnets are pulling the blade over because they're pretty strong, honestly. But no, they'd be pulling it the wrong way. But look at that. See that? The magnet picks the blade up. That's what's pulling the blade out there. 
See that? That's pretty cool. Catches on the magnet right there. And that comes around to there and then, huh, very interesting. Um, it's very thick stock, very thick stock in my opinion. Let's see. Yeah, 0 0.6, 0 0.16 stock. And then you have a flat grind, compound grind, Tanto. Uh, cool looking blade for sure. Yeah, pretty sharp. I mean, is it practical? No, but is it cool? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm trying to think, what's the safe way to do it? Just do this. You can one hand it. So you just kind of pop it out like that, spin it around like this, right? Pull it down. And then when you're done, spin it around. Like I can't cut myself because the blade is on the other side, right? I think. Swing it around. Close it. So what's the safe way to open it? Because the blade is now there. So I would just, I would open it this way. Because now you're on the spine side, right? But you could definitely do it one-handed. You know, I'm sure Balasong guys would probably like this. can't cut you because the backspacer kind of thing right see that i'll do a full video on this once i have handled it a bit um definitely an interesting piece that's for sure i don't know the price on these i think they're like 200 bucks though and i think it's 20 cv or m390 in there so probably made overseas for that price with titanium and you know m390 and everything but uh, I love the magnet idea. I just love magnets. You guys know that. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to get used to which way to turn it. That's the only thing I don't quite remember every time. But muscle memory would take care of that. But you can see I'm sitting here one-handing it over and over. So it definitely works. Cool. No clip. Uh, I just realized that there's no clip. So how do you carry it? You just drop it in your pocket? I guess it's not going to really come loose, right? Does it classify as a gravity knife then? I don't know. That's a good question. Legally, I don't know what you would call this. But it is cool. So, uh, yeah. That is the um, the Magblade. I got one other package. This is cool. Um, I believe these are patches. Oh, did I show it? I don't know. I believe these are patches. So these will be for sale on the Devo website. Check it out. RE patches, baby. Everybody raves about the RE patches, so I went and got some made. Dead Nuts RE patches, baby. Again, these will be sold on the Devo Knives website. See the colors? Devo knives. Um, we'll have these up on the website. I don't know what the price is going to be yet. we got to figure all that out. and we got to add them to the website. And I guess I'll do the shipping. Um, but yeah, they'll probably be like, I don't know, 12 bucks, Maybe two for 20 or two for 25 Something like that. Pretty normal pricing. They're not cheap, turns out. Um, they do cost a little bit of money. And then we have to ship them. And then we have to make a little money. So... Um, I think that's where we're going to be at. We might get some little mailers for them or something, and then we'll put them up. So let me know what you guys think. They do glow. So I did get the glow ones. Um, I thought that would be cool, but they look good normally too. So uh, there you go. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you to uh, Daily Carry Co. for sending that. Kexmo for sending that one. And Gondek for filling my order on this one. I uh, love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day, and I will catch you later.